inclusion in research and in knowledge making capabilities. So just to give you a brief overview of the project I've been working on, over the past two years we've been working with about 65 students in a project that looks at the multi-dimensional factors and the dynamics that influence low-income students from rural areas in South Africa to enter university, participate in it and successfully complete their university degrees of choice. Um, we are using a capabilities framing for learning outcomes, which means we understand them as being both cognitive and non-cognitive, so it, it really does cover the range of things that students have value to be and to do as a result of being um, in higher education. Um, so we are using a diverse range of methods to go about collecting these data sets. We have quantitative methods in the form of a survey and we're trying to develop an index um, that can tell us about inclusive higher education learning outcomes, particularly from students who come from low income areas in the country. Um, we also have qualitative research in the form of life history interviews and then we are also working with participatory methods and this is what I'm going to be focusing on today. And um, so we're using photo voice and I'm going to just explain what that is before um, going into explaining some of the values of, of using it in this uh, research. So we decided to use photo voice um, to kind of complement the qualitative uh, research element or strand in our research in order to explore and deepen our understanding of how students experience, how they experience and perceive inclusions and exclusions at university. We also wanted to involve students as co-researchers in a simultaneously creative but also critical knowledge creation process. And then um, we think Photo Voice also gives students the opportunity to enhance their capacity to tell stories of capability formation using visual narratives. Oh, I have not been. Is it necessary? Can you follow what I'm saying, though? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm trying. There we go. So how are we using photo voice? Uh, we piloted this process here at the University of the Free State over a three-day period where we worked with students um, in workshops. The first day of the workshops, we brought students together and they're all participating on a voluntary basis. So they're already working with us and we have been collecting life history interviews over a two-year period. So we worked with the same group and asked them if they were willing to participate in the process and you know, they said yes. So we were guiding them in the workshop to think about experiences of inclusion and exclusion, what inclusion and exclusion actually means. The kind of effects this might have on their learning outcomes and so the first day was like workshopping these ideas and for them to kind of locate specific experiences in their university journey of inclusion and exclusion. So we worked with, um, or in a previous workshop we had life, what are they called, river of life drawings and there's basically um, it's, it's a visual representation of one's life, but using a river as a metaphor. So they did these drawings, and at different points in the river, they would, for example, draw a tree to represent a time in university where opportunities were being converted into valued uh, functionings, and they were actually able to do things that they had reason to value. Or when times were tough, they might draw rocks in the river to represent you know, tough times or challenges and hurdles that they had to go through. They then moved from working with these river of, life, river of life drawings into developing a storyboard. And the reason for doing this is because we were slowly moving from a visual representation of what uh, their lives meant or like what their lives were going like in university to slowly moving towards the kind of photographs that they might want to take in the end to represent specific experiences of inclusion and exclusion. Um, so that was the first day of the workshop, all of that conceptualization, clarifying understandings for them to reflect on their experience and also work together in these discussions. In the second day of the workshop, we then had photography training. So just learning some of the technical aspects of working with a digital camera. Many of them had not worked with a camera before, let alone um, had the opportunity to think about how to tell their story of being at university using any kind of visual um, method. So they spent the day then taking photographs in and around campus and also off campus, particularly in relation to the storyboards <coughs> that they developed, which were working from the river of life, which is like the overall university experience, and then making it more specific to the story that they wanted to tell. Um, on the third day of the workshop, we then had the curation uh, process, which meant that students were then selecting uh, the best photos from the, the range of photographs that they took, 
and deciding on which ones were most representative of the different um, themes or stories that they wanted to tell with individual photographs. So that was you know, the final selection of, of the six photographs and basically the last stage in developing the photo story. Students also captioned each photograph um, and they also gave an overall theme or title to, to the story. And this is the process that we, we went through. Um, in the end, like just to give you a snippet of what the product looks like. Oh no. Wait a minute. This one? No. Alright, there's also that option. Try to do fancy technical things and they don't work. I can really help out Ah, okay. Mm. Oh, do I, oh, that's weird. It's not showing here. At all, no. Does anyone know how to get that onto here? <laughs> window P. Oh, uh, Windows and P. And duplicate. And then duplicate. No. Um, and then go back to look at whichever. That's oh, okay. I see. As long can as you that. Yeah, or sign in or whatever. Can I sign in? I know. He's <laughs> lying, he's lying, don't worry. Okay. Oh, goodness. Um, Thank yes. you, So this is an example, um, or like just a snippet of a photo story, because at the end of this process, students also had the opportunity to narrate their story and explain how they took photographs, the story that they wanted to tell, um, the, the symbolism, some of the metaphors that they were using, how they came up with captions, etc. So it's literally them telling the stories that they want to tell um, through photographs. And this is just a snippet from one of those visual stories. I'm from Alon North. Um, I'm currently studying Bachelor of Social Sciences at the University of the Free State. So I'm going to take you through the, my journey um, of being a student and uh, the title of my story or the title of my uh, the, the, the journey um, is my journey of thorns and roses. So the first picture is entitled my arrival and captioned roses have thorns. So my arrival at the city of roses, like the picture is roses, so the arrival at the city of roses, which is Bloemfontein, the beauty of it, meaning that me being at the university, me, um, working hard for, for something that is going to change my life or my family's life like forever and then the thorns uh, uh, is that though it is beautiful it's a beautiful thing to be at the university but it has challenges and yes <laughs> So, yeah, you want some more? <laughs> we want more. <laughs> uh, we'll have an opportunity to look at um, the rest of the video if, I mean, as, as you're suggesting, you do want more. But I just wanted to go back to the presentation and reflect on what the value has been in using this approach, not just for us as researchers, but, but for, for the research participants as well. So, we think. Um, Using photo voice has allowed us to triangulate some of our qualitative data. So not only relying on the life history interviews for fine-grained accounts of what it means to be a student at university for low-income youth, but also supplementing that data and using representations of knowledge that are typically not present in higher education research. Um, we think that students have generated very powerful stories, visual stories um, of inclusion and exclusion at university, told by them in their own words and based on their personal experiences. Um, so in a way, this has allowed students to both provide the knowledge and benefit from it. So we also had discussions at the end of the workshops about what the value of participating in, in the Photo Voice project was. And they said things like, you know, I'd never had the opportunity to present before. Um, they had the opportunity to practice articulating their thoughts 
thoughts, they were made aware of similarities in their experiences as a group, and even just knowing that somebody else was going through something similar was in itself um, a sense of comfort for them. So we also think that we have um, kind of redistributed power in how knowledge is created because unlike the typical way of collecting qualitative data, as researchers we decide on the problem, we decide on the questions, we know what we want to ask and our interaction with participants is as you know, research subjects or whatever as opposed to you know, redistributing and, and sharing the responsibility for creating that knowledge as well as disseminating it which creating the videos um, actually allows us to do because we can put it out there, they are available on YouTube um, and they're, they're re it's literally the voices of students as opposed to being a representation of their experience as interpreted or analyzed um, through a researcher's lens or understanding. Um, so we think it's gotten us to closer to also recognizing students as valued knowers. I mean, we're talking about this, was it Joan with recognition? So recognizing that students themselves you know, don't have to prove themselves as, as being valued knowers, but it's, uh, the onus is also on the work of recognition um, has to be done by researchers in how we approach um, the way that we do research. So not just the topics that we're looking at in order to address inequalities, but think about how we might perpetuate inequality in the ways that we actually conduct or do research. Um, so we think it's also improved the reciprocity in creating knowledge, which is a close a step closer to epistemic justice. So in a sense, participatory research and in our uh, project using a photo voice approach is just getting closer to breaking down some of those barriers or bridging the gap between who we might consider as researchers and people who we do research with and whether or not that dichotomy of research and researcher, um, those who know and those who don't know, um, like those boundaries are being a bit more blurred and so we're redistributing both how knowledge is created and how it's being disseminated. So hopefully, um, you know, ways of doing, res if research is done in more ways that are similar to this, we do get closer to um, achieving epistemic justice, not through the topics that we research, but in how we're doing the research. Thanks.